this is Sabina at Cross Keys Crafts with day 10 of my 28 day Christmas card challenge. Today I've got a very crammed craft table because I've already set different things up. One thing I have set up is my uh, stamping uh, platform. I have already put in my cardstock with, which is fairly thin actually, it's 160 GSM. Um, because I'm going to stick that onto the card base anyway. I have already mapped out the piece I'm going to die cut later. I've got this um, stitched edge square that I would like to use. I've also marked a bit because I'm going to um, die cut the sentiment as well. And I have already laid out my stamps. These are snowflake stamps and a penguin stamp from a magazine that I got last year but any stamps are fine for this technique this is just one I would like to show you by the way these I could not use they disintegrated last year I don't know whether I stored them wrongly before I put them back on the sheets but they got really really funny so I'm just using these few but they are perfect for this so I'm going to pick these up now that I've outlined them and see sometimes if you have stamps from different sets you need to stamp them separately because they have got different heights so I'm just going to put a bit of cardstock underneath as a shim that should just be enough So I'm going to use my embossing buddy, which is this one from the rabbit hole. And it's basically a brush that's got the powder in it. And I'm going to remove all the static and possible fingerprints. Then I'm going to use my Bursa Mark stamp pad and I'm going to ink up the... Um, Stamps. I've tried to move this over a bit so you can see what I'm doing. By the way, if you've never used your stamps before, ideally you condition them a bit by moving your uh, fingers or rubbing your fingers across to get any residue off. By the way, if you hear any scratching in the background, that's my cat trying to get into the craft room. I think he's hungry again. So, move this over and I actually I've made myself a little pressure too. I've made this from a doorknob or door handle from a sorry a drawer handle from an old cabinet and I just put some thick felt underneath and that helps me to push these down. So, and normally you can see if you've done it properly because against the light you might not be able to see it uh, on the camera, but I can. So what I need to do now, just pop this out of the way, is I'm going to put some clear embossing powder on it. You can use a white embossing powder, but this effect, which is called emboss resist, the idea is that the cardstock that you've got underneath shines through. So as you can see, I've moved my embossing powder, definitely the ones I use frequently, into these handy clip boxes because it means I don't need to have any paper underneath. You can just put it straight back into the box. Yep, there we go. Check that you've got no excess. Just thinking whether I've forgotten a snowflake there. Yes, I had. Yeah, this one hasn't stamped properly, but it doesn't matter. So I'm using, by the way, I'm using these clip boxes because the powder doesn't jump at you when you try to take the lid off so 
this is quite mess free and now I'm going to heat set this with my heat tool sure you heat it up first Sorry about the noise, I shouldn't have done that straight uh, right underneath the camera. So, if you hold your piece against the light, you can see where it's shiny and where it has set. I think I actually missed a piece there, I'll just quickly do that. So, we leave that to cool. Um, it is a bit warped, but I don't uh, bother about that because it's going through the die cutting machine straight afterwards. So now I'm just putting down my silicon mat, which keeps it in place a bit. Oops, knocking over the glue here. So I have chosen a few different colours. I have got um, these two Spectrum Noir ones. One in fuchsia, one, one in crushed velvet, and then I've got these from Lavinia Stamps, the Elements, the Blue Lagoon, and the Polar Blue. And I just take my blending brushes, which I've forgotten to take out. Sorry about the rustling in the background. So I've just, um, I'm going to link to these below. I only have one for blue, I don't mind whether I mix them. I've got one for purple, I just need to find my pink one. There we go. This is a different make, slightly smaller, but works just as well. So what you do now is you ink blend over your embossed bits. And I'll just start with any colour. And you will find that where you've embossed, the um, ink will obviously stay off. And then you can see the snowflake. I'm going to also blend down here because this is what I want to cut my sentiment from. So I want to have some matching colours. And this is where you see where I've missed out a bit, but I'm not too bothered about this. Oh, the other thing, as you can see, I just keep these in part of the packaging. I don't have a fancy brush holder. It just doesn't work for me. I keep these in a little tray in my drawers and that works much better for me. This ice blue is actually quite similar to the Blue Lagoon, so I see if I uh, blend it a bit lighter without too much pressure to get slightly different colour. I'm going to speed this up a bit now for the video so it doesn't take too long. There we go. So as you probably see, I went back with the brushes and just went around the edges and make sure uh, I'm going to have colour everywhere and also make sure you blend in between so you don't have any white there. Um, yeah, just going to put these out of the way. So now you take a piece of kitchen towel or I have got some 
pile of paper somewhere. As you can see, today I'm not that well prepared. It's a technique that you need a lot of materials for. And you just take off any residue that you've got on the embossing and you will find the motif comes out really, really nicely. There we go. So now this can go through the embossing machine. I'm going to cut out the panel and the sentiment. So I'm just going to tape this down. might not stick because the ink is still a bit wet. There we go. That's the panel. Hopefully this cut out as well. Yes. This always gets stuck here, I know about this, so and the other thing as this is very fine cardstock. Should maybe have put some double sided teeth from the back. But I'm not too fussed, I'll just tear this off and I will cut this down. So all that's left to do now is to stick this down onto the card panel. I thought about maybe doing a mat, but I don't know yet. And then the sentiment will go at the bottom. To keep this video short, I'm not going to do this on screen. I will uh, post this in my thumbnail and you will see the finished card there. All right, okay, I hope you like this uh, technique which is called um, um, Emboss Resist. And if you would like to see more of my videos, obviously I've got the next challenge coming up tomorrow, then please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you again soon. Thank you very much.